Welcome back to Tactical Accountants. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, it should be no secret that I'm a big fan of this scope, the Vortex PST Gen 2 1 to 6. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I can't promise you anything concrete in return, but it'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> Last year, I made a video comparing this scope to the much more expensive and much more bronze Vortex Razor Gen 2E 1-6, the lightweight one. I ended up keeping this one and selling that one because, as I discussed in that video, this scope has pretty much 90% of the performance of the Razor at 50% of the price. The only thing I don't like about it is that it is chunky. The PST 1 to 6 comes in at 1 pound 7 ounces, or if you're mathematically challenged, 23 ounces. That pound and a half on top of a rifle is not insignificant. Of course, if you want the capabilities of a scope like this, there was not much else up till this point that you could do about that weight, and that included stepping up to the Razor, because the Razor 1 to 6, uh, the standard one, actually weighs 2 or 3 ounces more than this and the lightweight E version only weighs an ounce less than this. But now, a new Challenger has entered the market. One pound, and let's call it two ounces, actually a little bit under. So this scope is five ounces, or over a quarter pound lighter than the PST 1 to 6. You know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. Scope is the Delta Optical Striker HD 1 to 6. And if you haven't heard of that company or this scope, uh, join the club because up until recently I didn't either. So Delta Optical comes to us from Poland, much like your narrator. Starting with the packaging, it definitely feels premium. You can see German font. I understand that these optics are common in usage in uh, Germany for hunters or, I don't know, competitive shooters. So definitely more of a brand presence there than in the US. You see there, the aim is optical perfection. Definitely when unboxing it, seems like a pretty premium product. But more important than where the manufacturer hails from, is where the scope is produced. And if we look at the bottom there, we have made in Japan. If we have to, overnight parts from Japan. Japan, certainly known for high quality glass and high quality manufacturing. More importantly, this scope is manufactured in the Light Optical Works factory. If you know anything about LOW, L-O-W, uh, people abbreviate it on the internet, this is the same factory that produces the Vortex Razor, some Trigicon scopes, and even the SIG Tango 6, which was recently adopted by the US Army as the official low-powered variable optic. So to know that this is coming from the same place is a big, big selling point when you're buying something from a brand you've never heard of. This scope has what I would argue is the razor's biggest selling point in my time with it. And that is an almost magical ability for the bezel to disappear when you're looking through it. But you can see how thin that bezel looks and how the reticle just seems kind of to be floating there. How little the bezel obscures. This is what the razor one to six is known for. Don't get me wrong, the PST is still a great scope to look through but you do get more of a sensation that you're looking through an optic, that you have the actual walls of the optic around the glass. So definitely a victory there for the Striker HD. The Razor versus PST comparison also applies to illumination. So let's start with the PST. On the left side here, we have 10 brightness settings with an offsetting in between each. If we go to max brightness on the PST, that's easily daylight bright. People like to uh, throw around aim point bright, and I would say that certainly applies. And what's nice about the PST is even when it's on nuclear brightness, it does not spill into the reticle at all. It's only the dot that illuminates. The striker, in contrast, 
has 11 brightness settings on the side here with an offsetting in between each. And when we go to max brightness on the striker, it's also easily daylight bright, nuclear bright, but you can see some bleed there into the top of the reticle, just like with the Razer 1 to 6. So which of the two is brighter? It's really six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh, they're both incredibly bright, just looking through them a lot on a sunny day. I do think the Striker is just a little bit brighter. I mean, it has 11 settings versus 10, not that that matters. If the PSC brightness is good enough for you, you're not gonna be disappointed with the Striker. Glass clarity, another thing that the PST did very favorably in relative to the Razer. The PSC glass, uh, I can find no faults with it. This time, instead of putting a seeing eye chart at 50 yards and zooming in on it, I put it at 30 yards. You have the comparison photos here. Let me know in the comments if you can see a glass clarity advantage for one scope or the other. I could not. I think they're both excellent. This is also a good time to discuss reticle. So they both have simple mill reticles. That was important to me. I didn't want a BDC reticle or any of these uh, newfangled things that kids these days are making. Get off my lawn. There's not much different in the two reticles between these scopes. The PST has dashes for the mill increments for both elevation and windage, so just simple lines. The Striker HD alternates between dashes and mill dots. So one, two, three, four, evens and odds. It does make it quicker to pick up where your hold is gonna be elevation wise. You don't have to actually count down on the reticle to get to five or six. So that is actually an advantage to the striker I didn't appreciate initially. In my comparison of the PST and the Razer, I could find no usable difference in field of view between the two, uh, which was high praise for the PST. The PSC 1 to 6 field of view at 100 yards, according to Vortex, is 112.5 feet at 1x magnification and 18.8 feet at 6x magnification. So pulling from Delta's website, unfortunately everything here is in meters because this is a country that hasn't sent anyone to the moon. The field of view at 100 meters, which is 109 yards or so, so it should be bigger than the PSTs, it's further away. 100 meters at 1x field of view, converted it here, 116.8 feet, and 6x, 19.4 feet. So I set up both scopes at 100 yards, aiming at the same point. You have the footage here. It's pretty clear that at the same distance at 1x, the PST has a wider field of view than the Delta. So if uh, according to these specifications the delta should be as wide of a field of view as a pst the lie detector test determined that was a lie hey, no, no, what's interesting at 1x is you can absolutely see more of the scene through the pst you can see both the left edge of the target boards as well as just barely the little uh, white um, round steel target I set up at the far right edge. Unfortunately, both of these things are not visible through the objective of the Delta Striker. But in the Striker's favor, you can see because of that thin bezel, everything that's just outside the field of view is visible. So if you're shooting two eyes open, again, it shouldn't really be that big of a difference. At 200 yards, I checked the field of view as well. The PST is clearly wider at both 1x and 6x. So at 6x, at the same magnification ranges, um, it's obviously a negative to have a smaller field of view. So victory for the PST there. With LPVOs, there is always the question of how true is the 1x magnification. In comparing these two, I believe it's a tie. They're both excellent. Indoors, if you're pretending to clear your house, don't judge me, we've all done it. You're gonna be happy with either one. Neither one up close makes it look like things are very magnified, which usually uh, lower end LPVOs do at 1X. 
panning around my living room, which is my test of choice for seeing how distorted, super up close things may look through a scope at 1x. They look just about the same, very hard to distinguish between them, with the exception of that disappearing bezel on the striker. I do think in this footage, it's noticeable that things outside the striker's field of view seem to be less blocked by the housing of the scope. Eye relief for the PST is quoted at 3.8 inches. Not a range, just 3.8 inches. The Delta Striker 1 to 6, according to Delta, has eye relief from 3.4 to 4.1 inches. I've looked through them both a bunch. I don't see much of an advantage either way. I don't think iBox is gonna be an issue with either of these scopes. They seem very comparable to me. At 1x, it's very generous. You definitely have a few inches of motion front and rear, and you can still make out the entire sight picture. At 6x, gets them a lot tighter. 6x, you really gotta have your eye pretty consistent relative to the scope. But you would think at 6x, for the kind of shooting you're gonna be doing, your head position is probably gonna be pretty consistent. So I would say it's a tie for eye box. I stuck around at the range until uh, dark to see how these two compared in low light, just panning around at 200 yards and at the beautiful scenery in uh, rural Illinois with both optics at 1x and also at 6x. It's, it's much darker through the camera than with the naked eye. And it's also, it's difficult to be consistent, especially at 6x when recording to not make one look darker than the other. It may look in the footage like the striker at 6x is a little darker. I think it did to me. I've gone back now um, and in other low light conditions have looked through both at 1x and 6x. I can't see a meaningful difference. I would say it's a tie. If you had to pick one, maybe the PST is just a little bit better in low light. Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. On to turrets. Not particularly important in an LPVO, in my opinion, because this is not the kind of optic you're really gonna be doing much dialing on, or at least I wouldn't. Your results may vary. Starting with the PST, first of all, the actual turrets on the PST, you can see are wider than on the Delta. And this is a con of the PST I didn't discuss in the Razor comparison, but the turrets are, they're very, they're tough to turn. They're not very tactile. Uh, I'll turn them here for you guys. Not sure if you'll be able to hear them turning. Probably not. It takes a lot of effort to turn them. They're kind of mushy because it takes that much effort. It's easy to go two or three clicks when you only want to go one. Uh, but again, this is the kind of scope that you zero and hopefully you, you leave it there and you use holds for both elevation and wind. So it's not a big con, but the turrets on the PST are not great. There is a screw here, I believe to set zero, but you do need a tool to do it. The Delta Striker also has capped turrets. I've heard it said that these are identical to the turrets on the Trigicon Credo or some model Trigicon LPVO that's also made at the Low factory. I can neither confirm nor deny that, but the turrets are a lot more tactile and lower effort than the PST. Not sure if you could hear it. Hold on. Much easier to turn than the PST, but in a good way. And much more audible and tactile. Furthermore, you can lift on the turret for elevation and for windage, spin it freely, and put it back down to reset your zero. So what that means for me is theoretically, with turrets that are definitely serviceable, you could in fact dial with the striker instead of just using holdovers. Uh, that's something that I wouldn't advise doing with the PST just based on how the turrets feel. So advantage to the striker in terms of turrets. One other thing that I'm not crazy about with the PST 
is how much effort it takes to change the magnification. The Razer 1 to 6 is the same way. It takes, uh, takes quite a bit of effort without a throw lever. It makes it feel solidly built, but it's something that you really wouldn't want to be doing too much uh, under stress if you're trying to be quick about it. The Striker, in contrast, takes some effort, but quite a bit less, probably half as much effort, so it's definitely smoother. You can, of course, get a throw lever from Vortex, but that's an added cost and also a little bit of additional weight because you see it's aluminum and it goes around it so i don't know maybe half an ounce whereas the striker comes with this little nub of a throw lever threads in right there it's included with it it's lightweight because it already has the threading to just screw it in so you're ready to go so throw lever advantage easily to the striker Luckily for the Vortex, it makes up for the lack of throw lever by the cheaper price of entry. So MSRP on the PST 1 to 6 is astronomically high compared to street price. MSRP is $899. You can find these for around $500 uh, and it's not that uncommon, which is a great deal. As of the time of this recording, the MSRP on the Delta Striker HD 1 to 6 is $849. I got mine from a darn fine shot. I believe they may be able to get you one for a little bit cheaper, like closer to $700 or $750 compared to $850. Uh, they had promotions at least when I was looking. I would give that a shot. But at best, you're looking at roughly a $200 difference between the PST 1 to 6 and the Striker 1 to 6. So Vortex is well known for good reason as having one of the best warranties in the business. It's lifetime, it's no questions asked. They call it a VIP warranty and that's exactly how they treat you. That's a very important thing, that's a huge selling point. Delta, on the other hand, doesn't have much of a presence in the US. Uh, the box, the website say that it has a 10 year warranty but it's a big question mark. Do you have to go through the retailer? Do you have to contact Delta in Poland? Are you gonna to have to ship it overseas? Hopefully not. The only thing I was able to find is uh, on Delta's website, it states that these optics are tested by, I don't know if it's pronounced DEVA or DEVA. Apparently it's some kind of optic testing agency or standard in Germany. So presumably they have to stand up to some level of abuse. It also stands to reason that if this optic is produced in the same factory using many of the same components as the Bulletproof Vortex Razor, and also apparently that Sig Tango, which just got adopted by the US Army, then hopefully this is similarly durable. But reliability is going to have to wait for the test of time. Five ounces is a considerable weight savings, and I also like the disappearing bezel on the striker. I like the turrets. I like a lot about it. So, despite my cautious nature, we usually don't pick up hitchhikers. But I'm gonna go with my instinct on this one. Saddle up, partner. I have to believe that if Vortex were to come out with a Gen 3 1 to 6 Razor, with that nice bronze color at 17 ounces. I feel like these would sell like hotcakes, but the actual specs and mechanics of the scope are very impressive for its weight. So if that's important for you, like it's important for me, go with the Striker. If you can stomach that unknown with the warranty. Otherwise, if you have a PST one to six, and you're happy with it, like I was happy with it, so that extra five ounces doesn't bother you too much, by all means, stick with the PST. It's an excellent scope, and it always will be. So that's all I've got, guys. Stay safe out there. We will catch you next time.